I'm Sprinkler Nerd Andy, and you're watching Sprinkler TV. Today, we are going to unbox Eritrol RS1000 is a professional grade wireless rain sensor that will interrupt your irrigation or sprinkler system when it rains at a user defined set point. I'd like to open the box, kind of show you the parts and pieces, talk about how to hook it up, talk about how to pair it, and then also answer one of the most frequently asked questions, which is, can you replace the battery? So let's go ahead and flip the camera over here. We'll go with the down cam and let's get this out of the box. The Irritual wireless rain sensor has been around for a long time. I believe we're coming up on 20 years. Let's take the parts out here. We have the rain sensing device itself. It comes with a gutter connect. And then we have the receiver. I guess we'll call this the receiver and this the transmitter. I believe that's how Eurotrol labels it. So we have the transmitter here. We have the receiver that you wire to your control box, which has a nice slip on cover. So those are the two pieces. It also comes with a sort of double sided sticky pad, which I guess you can uh, put on the back here. So if you wanted to stick it to the wall or stick it to your control box without screwing into the drywall, you can do that. But it also does come with uh, four screws, two perhaps to put into some siding and uh, two to go into perhaps your drywall, but I would use whatever screws are appropriate for your application. You don't have to use the screws that come with the uh, rain sensor itself. Let's flip back over here. I want to give you a closer look at what the rain sensor looks like. So we'll start with that first. This white cable here coming down the bottom is the antenna that communicates with the receiver. And then here we have the gutter mount and you can use this sort of um, set screw to tighten it onto the gutter, or you can actually remove the set screw and you can screw it directly into siding to the wall, to a fence post, to the side of your mailbox, wherever is appropriate to get the best, um, the best access to the open sky. And that's actually really important to mention is that you wanna put this where it's open to the atmosphere, open to the sky, not under a tree limb, not under your eave, not behind a bush. So often we see these in places that just aren't appropriate. You want it up to the sky, you want it to sense the rain coming down. And then you have one, two, three, four settings from one eighth of an inch, one quarter, one half, three quarters of an inch of rain that you can see there. So that, what that will do is that will allow you to determine what is the minimum amount of rainfall I would like to have before this trips my irrigation system. So as it is here out of the box, it is set to one quarter inch of rain. That is the amount of rainfall that is required in order to trip the system. And you can see that you can just simply turn these, turn the spindle as such to the various set points. And let's go ahead and actually take this off so you can see the, um, the discs that are inside there. The spindle is replaceable. So if yours is damaged, if it's been out in the sun, if it's dried out over the last 20 years, you can buy replacement spindles um, or caps, whatever you might call it. And then inside, down in there, there's just a contact point. So the, uh, the bottom of the, Come on, spindle there. When these discs swell up, it presses against a button that interrupts the circuit and the signal is transmitted from the transmitter to the wireless receiver. Let's talk about that next. And, oh good, you know what? Eritrol used to also have an antenna coming out of the bottom of this. It looks like they have uh, modified the device. So you can see the sensor status um, and then if you would like to bypass it, so if your irrigation or sprinkler system is currently shut off due to rain, but you would like to manually operate the sprinklers, you can press the bypass button and that will allow the system to run even if it's in a rain hold condition. Okay, it couldn't be any simpler. Um, the way that you wire it up to the control box, you have four uh, wires that are necessary. Let's see if I can actually 
show these to you. We have the two red wires. Come on. Well, here, how about this? I'll hold it closer. You have two red wires here. Those, those require 24 volt power. So every irrigation system or control box is slightly different, but they all have a 24 volt power source. And if yours is old and it does not, you can attach these to the top of the control box transformer. That's where 24 volts is coming out. And then you have the two wires that go on the sensor terminal, white and brown. And this is for controllers that are normally closed, which is 99% of all irrigation system controllers are normally closed. And you know this because there's a jumper in the terminal um, conductors on the controller. There's a little wire in there. So you'll have to remove those, remove that jumper. And then you have your white and your brown and they can go on any terminal. There's no polarity. Uh, that's actually how the how the receiver works is it's just going to interrupt the circuit. So the white and the brown wire are the wires that go on the sensor terminal that gets interrupted. And then again, the red wires go onto the 24 VAC terminals inside your control box, your clock, your timer, whatever you want to call it. And then you've got about um, hmm, 18 inches of wire here. So you could put your sensor on the wall next to the controller. You could mount it, uh, you know, on the outside of the control box, whatever would uh, be the best way to sort of uh, give you access to it so you can see it and manage these, these cables. Um, the other thing, I'm gonna flip the camera back over. We do get a lot of questions about replacing the batteries and you can take the bottom here of the transmitter off. Let's see if I can, see if I can actually do this without damaging it here. Let's see, let me actually uh, grab something here. Yeah, you can actually, let me just push hard. Yeah, you can pull this cover right off and then um, see inside, and I'll flip the camera over here so you can better get a better look. Inside is the circuitry as well as the battery casing. So let me give you, let me show you this. This is the circuitry. Let's go to show you the back of it first. That's the brains of the system. And then inside that white cap is where the batteries go. And you can see it contains two CR2032 batteries. You can easily find those batteries at your, you know, Walgreens, Rite Aid, CVS, or probably at a grocery store too. And so if you've had this in place for five or 10 years and you've lost signal, just go ahead and get some new batteries and replace it. So, I hope that helps um, cover sort of how to install it, what it looks like. These are very, very reliable rain sensors. They've been around for a really long time. So if you are considering a wireless rain sensor, the Eritrel RS1000 is a great option. It will probably take you 30 minutes, no more to install it. The most difficult part is going to be getting on your ladder or finding a suitable place to put the actual transmitter. And again, please look at your yard or your property and find a location that's open to the sky. And it doesn't have to be close to the controller. These sensors have a range of about 300 feet. So you could put it on the back fence or you could put it, I had one on my mailbox for a while just cause I thought it was kind of cool. And uh, yeah, hope that helps. If we can help you with any of your other irrigation or sprinkler needs, feel free to uh, contact us. You can reach us by phone, chat, email, text message. And you know what? You could probably even schedule a call with me if you want technical support for your irrigation system. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll catch you on the next episode of Sprinkler TV.